If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as follow me and subscribe to me on all my other social media platforms. What's up Thrashers, and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and I am back with yet another album review for you guys. And this one, while I did Autopsy first yesterday, now we're going to talk about the biggest release that came out on the 30th of September, and one of the biggest albums to come out in 2022, and that is of course the latest album from Slipknot, The End So Far. Of course, everybody knows about Slipknot. In fact, I talked about their last album, We Are Not Your Kind, and I thought that was a really damn good album. How does this one stack up to We Are Not Your Kind? Well, <clears throat> it, it was kind of shocking to hear that we was getting a new Slipknot album kind of soon because they like to take their time and like spread out the gap of their studio albums a little bit more over the years. Like, hell, it was five years between 0.5 Degree Chapter and We Are Not Your Kind. Here, it was only three years. But with COVID happening, they had plenty of time to write new songs and go into the studio last year and record everything. But let's check out how this album stacks up. So we kick things off with Adderall. And this is a very unique track for a Slipknot track because it's largely synth-driven but it sets a mood and an atmosphere going forward on the rest of the track. Drums do slowly come in while the synths and keyboards are happening. And throughout the whole track, Corey is showcasing his vocal ability. Like, a lot of people like to talk shit about Corey Taylor. Honestly, he's one of the best metal vocalists, I would say, of all time. Because he has a wide range. Like, he can go from, like, low gothic to even falsetto and still sound great every time, and his growls are unmistakable. Here, this is pretty much him showing off mostly his clean chops, though I'll talk more about certain stuff when I get to the overall synopsis of the album, but with this track, it was largely a showcase for Corey's vocals, but it also was kind of experimenting a little bit with like a 70s prog vibe, which is not something you, you would hear out of Slipknot, but... They definitely thought, you know what, with the time we have writing music, let's experiment and let's see what happens with us doing some prog stuff and then other things that I'll talk about <coughs> when we get there. But then we get to the first heavy song of the album with the dying song and introducing cleans right out of the gate and then you get classic Slipknot brutality all throughout. And like even the verses feel like classic Slipknot. And the riffs that you get pretty much throughout this track are filled with groove and heaviness. And even the bass is having like some really cool moments on this track. Chapel Town, uh, the Chapel Town Rag, of course, good old DJ Sid Wilson is brought up in the beginning to kind of <coughs> show off his DJing skills while you get some low vocals from Corey. And then it's just kicked into full gear with aggression and riffs, blast beats, and even tremolo riffs done in almost like a death metal style come flying through your ears for a moment. And even like the chorus on this track brings in a little bit more melodic guitars, but it also has like an anthemic feel to the chorus. In the next track, you get like suspenseful ambience, but with more of those soothing cleans from Corey to give off. And really, this whole album gives off like a horror movie feel to it. But uh, yeah, and this uh, song kind of goes against a typical Slipknot structure. Typically, you would get like growling verses and melodic choruses. Here, it's like melodic verses. And a growling chorus, which is really cool to hear because it, it, it sounded like they were going for the Dan Swano philosophy of the sing-growl approach. Do the verses for the girls and the choruses for the guys, as Dan Swano would put it. And that's pretty much what they did on the song Yin. And the atmosphere throughout the track kind of gives off like some bleak sorrow 
but it balances well with like the horror vibe that's going on. Then we get to Hive Mind. You get like almost like weird circus soundscapes in the beginning before a vicious riff and blast beat just right in the mouth. And even like a melodic tremolo riff shows up for a moment, which was really cool. And there are even moments a couple times in this song where it got almost thrashy. But the bridge on this track in particular gets somehow epic with how the guitars are progressing throughout the bridge. It was really, really interesting to hear that Slipknot can go epic. Never thought I would say that. But then moving in from that song, we get to one of my favorites of the album. We get Warranty. And this song is pretty much almost a straight down the line, like death metal track almost, but with clean vocals and melody at the end. But you get this like thrashy death metal riff right out of the gate. And that riff continues pretty much throughout everything in the verses. And honestly, kind of reminds me of Blood Red Throne a little bit, it, like something off of their last album, Imperial Congregation, I kind of got little hints from. I doubt they were listening to that album when recording this, but that was just kind of what I heard. I kind of heard a little bit of a Blood Red Throne vibe with the riffs and how they would use the double bass to complement the riff. The chorus, however, gets a little bit Pantera-ish with how groovy it gets, but it has those growling vocals intact. And then you get, actually, the first time on the album, we, well, actually, no, I forgot, the Dying Song actually had a really cool lead, but Warranty, the lead on here, it kind of gets a little bit chaotic, almost a bit like Slayer at times, but there are little tinges of melody in the guitars in the background throughout a good chunk of this track. Meanwhile, the bridge, like I said, it gets melodic and the clean vocals come back while there's some awesome drum work going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we get to Medicine for the Dead, the longest track of the album at a little over six minutes. Creepy ambience. And this is going to kind of run into a little bit of a theme with the next several songs. You get like weird ambience in the beginning, whether it's creepy, haunting, sorrowful or somber whichever word you prefer but here it's very creepy but you get some haunting clean guitars coming in and then the guitars turn heavy but still retaining a little bit of melody meanwhile the song as a whole borderlines on doom metal because it's super slow for the most part and then like the vocals are going back and forth like Corey's doing the cleans and then he's switching to growls while it stays very much doomy. And those little melodies that you get on this track definitely help provide more emphasis to the creepy atmosphere that this song really has. Um, and again, it's another great example of Corey showcasing his vocal talents. <clears throat> Excuse me, again. Then we get into Acidic. Again, more creepy ambience, but you get a sinister riff but it has like a doom groove going on. It's like in between doom and groove metal, kind of like in that sweet spot, tempo wise. And then of course, Corey's cleans and even the bass are really what's carrying the verses forward while the guitars are more in the background to give off or provide more atmosphere in the background as opposed to being at the forefront. And Pretty much the chorus keeps that idea going, but the guitars are not only keeping on building atmosphere, but provides a sinister quality to that atmosphere. And in the bridge, you get one of the best riffs of the album, and it's just laid out with pure, unadulterated aggression. Then we get into Heirloom <clears throat> with a sweet drum intro while the guitars... Once again, providing a bit of a backdrop of atmosphere before it gets aggressive and then Sid bringing out more soundscapes on the turntables. And really, this song was maybe one of the more straightforward songs. It's just full of riffs that just crunch and punch choruses with melody and groove. And that's all you can say about it for the most part. It's just straight down the line, meat and potatoes, but it's a damn good meal of meat and potatoes. Then we get to H377. 
guitar ambience with drums to build up the song. And then the song kind of becomes a little bit of like a technical death metal song. You get like this technical chugging riff that feels almost like decapitated a little bit. And that riff continues and it gets even more brutal in the verses. And then the chorus brings in some gang vocals and still retaining a groove to give it another uh, sense of, of an anthem to the song. And then even the bridge gets really technical and blast beats just fly by really, really quick. Then we get Desaad or Desaid or Sade. Desaad, I think is what it's really called. But again, you get haunting clean guitars and drums to set off more of the darker tone. But it's followed out or followed through with the bass. And then we return to clean vocals. They come back here on the verses while the riffs and drums are kind of going in a lot of different directions. And then like the pre-chorus, really notable drum fill. And then the chorus, once again, soothing in the vocals while musically in terms of the riffs, you get some like cool alternate picking patterns. And then even the bridge kind of speeds up a little bit to like speed metal territory. And then we get to the final track, Finale, which was another one of those experimental tracks. You get, like, beautiful clean guitars. And this is definitely arguably the most somber song in terms of the vibe and the atmosphere. Piano and strings and Corey's voice, oh, it just complements everything so beautifully. The guitars do shift to give off, like, more of that melodic horror feel again, but it's briefly... And then the chorus brings in the rest of the instruments together, and it's, again, quite doomy in the tempo and filled with sorrow. And, again, more of that kind of prog vibe in the sense of, like, we're experimenting, we're trying different things musically to feel a little bit, perhaps, progressive. But overall, like, the production on this album I thought was really good. Like, everything was crystal clear and audible. Nothing was weighing in on top of the other too much. The bass is pulsating through the mix. And honestly, one of the big standouts for me of this album was the bass work. Like, I forget the name of their bass player now, but he's showing that he's got some really damn good bass chops. There are some notable bass lines all throughout the album. Of course, also what you get, especially in the second half of the album, you get some really cool solos from Jim Root. Like, Jim Root showcasing a lot of his uh, guitar abilities. Like, in, in the Heirloom, you get, like, technical shred going on briefly. Meanwhile, in Acidic, it starts off with feel, but then turns into shred. <coughs> Excuse me, again. And then you get to... Um, H377 where it's melodic shred and then like even songs like um, like Finale you get like a more haunting feeling lead so like Jim Root showcasing his guitar solo abilities by going in every direction you can go with soloing now and also with the experimentation like they're experimenting with death metal elements with doom metal elements and even some progressive metal here and there, but it still feels like classic Slipknot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, as far as the things that I didn't like about the album, really the only thing I didn't like about it is that while this is a long album, it's over 50 minutes, I feel like they kind of noodled around too much with theatrics, especially at the end of songs, like the last like 30 seconds to a minute of almost every song of the album well, except for a few, kind of noodled too much with theatrics. And I get it. You kind of want to give off a theatrical feel, especially if you were going for, like, a horror vibe with a lot of the songs. You do kind of want that to complement the rest of the music. But for me, I think they did it a little bit too much. And there were a couple moments like, yeah, it's classic Slipknot, and I do like it for that reason. But especially in the first half, it was like they were doing kind of the same things they were doing in years past, particularly in the first half. But the, the first half is solid throughout, but it's the second half that really sold me on this album because they were trying different things, and, I, and for the most part, it worked. 
So overall, when you combine the good stuff and the stuff that I didn't care to or care for too much, this is still a really good album. Now, is it as good as We Are Not Your Kind? I'm going to say it's somewhat on par with We Are Not Your Kind. I'm not going to say it's better than We Are Not Your Kind. I'm not going to say We Are Not Your Kind is better than this. They're kind of almost on equal footing. I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. I think this is a very damn good album. Of course, the first half kind of drags the score down a little bit. Like, if the first half would have been just as good as the second half, this would have gone up higher in the score because the second half kicked ass. But, <clears throat> like I said, first half, it was solid, and that's all I can really say about it is that it was solid. Second half, they were more adventurous, more ambitious, and I loved it for that reason. But of course, that's just my opinion. What did you guys think of The End So Far by Slipknot? Let me know in the comments below, and until next time, horns high. See you guys soon. At the ballpark. Someone's gonna put lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> I took the tomato. Okay, yeah, it's, it's Levi, it's Levi. Damn it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Could I? Open it? <laughs> I really want to know what he got for this one. All right, Seth, let's go to Tomato Town. I would, I would like a single slice of your greatest tomatoes in the park. Minus tomato, please. Calm down, Seth. Calm down, Seth. Calm down, Seth. Somebody vote. No, it's no, it, it's Levi. Levi's the one that has some. Levi's the majority. Yeah. Oh, oh my lord. Seth, breathe. Oh, tomato. Dude. I'm gonna be really uh, interested to see these prompts. Yeah, like. Like, Officer, please me out the ballpark. Me. I just wanted to eat my tomato. <laughs>